Hey everyone, Eric here. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to build a basic e-commerce financial model for a 24-month period. By the end of this video, you will understand how to project orders, revenue, your marketing costs, and look at the core profitability of your business over time for an e-commerce business. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you need to do whenever you build a financial model is you need to look at something called the unit economics. Unit economics. And what are the unit economics? So the unit economics is the financial breakdown of one individual order. So let's start with the average order value. Call this the AOV. But what this really means is it's the average revenue for one order. And these businesses usually sell a lot of different products, but over sort of many orders, usually have a, an average order value that is consistent through time. So the next thing is you need to break down the cost per order. So generally you have like product and manufacturing, and I'm assuming we're producing some kind of a physical product. Packaging, um, fulfillment. So once you send, after you make your product and package it, you send it to your warehouse. And in the warehouse, it's usually a third party warehouse. And you need to pay them to effectively take the product and fulfill it. So pack it up in the box. And then you obviously have to pay for shipping. So this would give you your total COGS. So let's put some assumptions in here. Let's say that our average order value is $125 per order. And if you look at the breakdown of our individual costs, let's say the product costs $30 to, to make, packaging is $3, fulfillment is, let's say, $8, and shipping is $11. So that would make our total cost of goods sold for one order $52. COGS stands for cost of goods sold. And these are just your direct product costs. So anything that is involved in producing or shipping the product itself. This wouldn't include other costs that are sort of like rent or salaries. Those things don't touch the product or aren't involved in the production and the shipping of the product. So this is your direct product cost. And you have something called your gross profit. This is the, product, the profitability at the product level. So if you sell your product and then you make it and you ship it to the customer, you have roughly... $73 of gross profit. And it's always good to look at this percent because this kind of tells you, you know, how much profit does your business generate at the product level to basically pay for all of its other expenses. Then I want to put in a metric called blended CAC. What's blended CAC? CAC stands for customer acquisition cost. And this is the total marketing cost that you spend to get one customer to purchase. And so we would know, basically looking at our historical information, that, okay, we spend, let's say, $10,000 in a single month, and we had X number of customers purchase. Our blended CAC is going to have an average cost, and let's say in this case it's $52. And so, okay, we say this number is a predictable number. We've been maintaining at a $52 CAC for a number of months, and that's what we think we will continue with in the future. So this gives you a post Marge, uh, marketing profit of, let's take a look here, $21. So every time you sell a product and after you do the marketing, you should have about $21 of profit. So what do we do from here? First off, let's sort of build out this model a little bit. And let's say that we want to build out a 24 month model. And I'm going to go over to view freeze, freeze panes, whatever cell you're in, it's going to lock the rows above it and the columns to the left of it. So now we can move around and we don't lose our sort of orientation of where we are in the sheet. So M1, M2, what are these? This just stands for month. I'm just saying this is month two. And I can take this and drag it across. And let's say we want to build a model that goes out for two years. So to M24. Okay, so what's the next thing we need? Well, the next thing we need is to know how many orders we are effectively forecasting. And with that, we can calculate the revenue, the costs, and the total marketing. So we need to put in an advertising assumption. Because with a business and with a financial model, if you don't advertise, you don't have sales. 
So you need to start at the thing that ultimately drives everything, which is the advertising. That in turn drives the orders. That in turn drives the sales. That in turn drives the cost. That in turn drives the cash flow. So you always start the sort of starting point of a model is always advertising. So let's say you spend $5,000 in advertising. And then from here, what you do is you just increase this 10,000 a month. And actually, let's say we start with 10,000. And so we'll see um, over the lifetime of this model, it'll go up 10,000 a month. And finally, it will get to 250,000 because I want to look at a fast ramp. So from here, how do you think we calculate this? Well, we know the average marketing cost per order. We know that that's $52. So if we spend $10,000 and every $52 we get a new order, all we have to do is, and I'm using the round function because I want a whole number, take 10,000 and divide it by your blended customer acquisition cost, or we call blended CAC, and round that to zero digits. So if we spend $10,000, we should get 192 orders because 192 times $52 per order in marketing equals roughly $10,000. But we rounded this number, so it's not exact. OK, so over time, this is the amount of orders that we have. And so what we can do here is we can just copy all this across to highlight multiple cells at the same time. I'm holding Shift, down arrow. To copy, Control C. Now Shift, right arrow and control V. Okay, so now we have advertising orders. We have the financial breakdown of each order. What else do we need? So let's go up and kind of try to set up our revenue model. So here, let's say we have net revenue. And so that's pretty easy from here. All we have to do is take the number of orders, multiply it by the average order value, average revenue per order. So we know in this situation that the revenue itself is projected to be 24,000. So if we copy that to the right, you'll see that it's growing over time. And we'll copy that all the way to the right in just a moment here. Now we know that our cost of goods sold, or our COGS as we call it, well, we have some of our COGS, but we're actually missing a couple important things. So what are we missing? Well, I'd like to highlight a couple things. First off, credit card fees. Anytime customers pay, with their credit card, which for sure they're paying with because it's a $125 product, so they're paying with their credit card, we have to pay about 2.75% to Visa or whoever the sort of um, bank who's processing the payment is. It sounds like a crazy amount, and it is, and I'm hoping that some business um, disrupts that industry to make that cheaper, but for now, we've got to be stuck paying 2.75% of our revenue to these companies. Credit card fees. So. All we have to do is create an assumption, 2.75%. And let's just copy that across all the way, two years. OK, so what we need to do here is we need to multiply our revenue times 2.75%, sadly. OK, so that's roughly what the credit card fees should cost. OK, so what about these other things? Product manufacturing. Well, we know it's $30 per basically order. So all we have to do is multiply the orders. And I'm going to lock the row, meaning put a dollar sign in front of the row, so that when we copy this formula down, uh, the row doesn't move. And I'll show you what I mean in just a sec here. And we multiply it by the product cost. So if we multiply this down one, we'll see that the row reference did not move because we locked the row. However, this other cell was totally unlocked, and the reference moved down one cell. So now it's 192 times our packaging. The next one is 192 times fulfillment, and the next one is 192 times shipping. So here we can see that we've got most of our costs calculated, but I want to say that we probably are going to have a customer support rep if we're ramping this thing up so fast. So what, what can we do for customer support? So I'm just going to make a series of assumptions. Let's say percent of orders with questions. So this is the percent of people basically emailing us. So maybe they go in and they say, oh, well, you know, I'm not totally sure if I want to order. I can't tell what this product is. So let's say 10%. Um, I have no idea if this is accurate. It's probably less, but 
I'm just sort of um, showing you how you would work through a series of assumptions to create uh, a model. So, okay, so round, because I'm just going to round this to a whole number, orders times 10%, round that to zero. Okay, so we're saying that's 19 questions. And say, so let's say, how many questions... Questions per support rep. How many questions can one support rep handle in a month? Let's say 250. Maybe this rep is doing various things at the same time, and um, they can only handle 250 questions a month. And so the support reps is round, but I'm going to say round up. Because if I take, two if I take the 19 questions and divide it by questions per rep. If it's a round function, it'll round down to zero. But we know that if there's any questions, we need at least one person to answer them. So I'm using the round up function. It'll round up to the next whole number as long as I say number of digits is zero. Okay, so we're gonna need one support rep and I'm gonna say pay per month. And this is including benefits. Let's say is 4,500 per month for this rep. Okay, so now we've got a forecast, so check this out. If we drag this forward, let's see, does this get us to multiple reps? So look, at this point, this formula, we're at 250, and one rep can handle 250 questions a month, right? So we took 250 divided by 250, that's still one. But as soon as we get to 269, our roundup formula rounds up to two reps because one rep can only handle 250 questions a month, so now that goes to two reps. This is a really helpful way to forecast payroll for positions that are tied to a certain volume of a business KPI. Um, a lot of sales rep forecasts are calculated in this way. Let's say if you're a business that generates leads and you have a sales team and it's like, okay, X number of people schedule a call with the sales team. Well, you can tie that to a metric in your sales forecast and then calculate the number of sales reps and their salaries, et cetera, so it's always great to sort of automate these formulas. So in this situation, all we're going to do is we're going to take our total customer support reps, multiply it by pay per month, and there you have a metric. So now we have our whole cost of sales. So we can say total COGS, and let's total that up here. So we say it's 15,144, but we're not done. Now we want to say gross profit and GP percent. This is also often called gross margin. I have no idea why. It's the exact same metric, but you'll hear people call it gross margin and uh, don't be concerned because it is gross profit. They are the same metric. Okay, so let's see what our GP percent is. Okay, it's 36% and that's kind of strange, right? Because our gross profit down below is 58%. Well, it's because we added in the customer support rep and the credit card fees. Now, finally, we want to look at our advertising and then our post marketing or post advertising profit. Okay, so if we put this down here, now we can say, okay, well, here's our product profit, but then we did some advertising. So how much is left over at the end of the day? And let's say percent of revenue. Okay. So this gives us a good sense of sort of, okay, where are we at from day one? But as we scale our product up over time, we should become profitable because we know we are profitable on each individual order. So let's copy this across and then copy it all the way across. And then we can sort of chat through it a little bit. Okay, so in this situation, and I'm just going to, double click the outside. So we can see that our business in the first couple months, um, just in the first month turns a small loss because after advertising and with this customer support rep and the credit card fees, we can't quite make a profit, but we become profitable on our orders in subsequent months and sort of our post-marketing profit starts to grow and it becomes about 12% of revenue. Okay, so does this model include all the costs that a business would have? No, of course not. There would probably be other costs. And if you wanted to model those in, you could easily just put them below, create another assumption section at the bottom, and add in individual costs related to your business. 
but this should give you a really, really clean and clear structure on understanding what is your customer acquisition cost, which you should be measuring anyway. What are your orders? What are your sales? Often over time, you will see your customer acquisition cost change. Some businesses see it go um, up if they rely heavily on paid advertising. Some businesses see it go down if they're able to grow their sort of organic sales a lot. So again, you want to understand these dynamics, but this should give you a, a really easy model to start with if you're forecasting your own e-commerce business. All right, so I hope this video was super valuable to you and you learned a ton. First off, if you want to download this Excel model, feel free to download it in the description below. Second, only 10% of people that watch my videos subscribe to my channel. So please subscribe and like right now so that you don't miss any of my new videos. And lastly, please join my email list or Discord if you don't want to miss any announcements about finance programs that I'm getting ready to launch. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.